Do you sometimes get a little frustrated that progress on piano quite often seems to be one step forward, two steps back? Well, stay tuned for an idea of how you can use this to your advantage, and it's something I discovered quite recently. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. Now, if it's your first trip here, then please do think about subscribing. Simply click the little icon in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. Regular viewers will know that I'm always looking for ways to improve the way I practice. And if I make a discovery or think I've made a discovery anyway, I'll publish a video on it to see what other people think and see if it can be useful for them. In various sources, I've seen many amateur pianists get quite frustrated with sometimes what appears to be very, very slow progress when learning a piece, and the fact that we'll fix a mistake on one day, yet a day or two later it seems to creep back into our playing. Well, today I want to share a way that I think will help us get over this, and I've been sort of mentally nicknaming it one step forward, two steps back. My general way of practicing something that I know is going to be difficult for me to control is to actually split it into a lot of simpler exercises that are easier to do and then gradually build these exercises back up into the finished piece slowly over time. I explained how I did this using Liszt Liebestraum number no. 3, the second cadenza, where I started pretty much with just pairs of notes and over time increased it to one and then two octaves. This same technique can actually be used in pretty much any music. Let's look, for example, at Beethoven's Fur Release. Most of this piece is quite simple, but there are a couple of places where it's a little bit tricky. And if you listen carefully to a lot of the YouTube recordings of this, and you've maybe heard people play it over the years, it's surprisingly how many people actually fluff up that little section of 30-second notes or demi-semiquavers. You know, by comparison with the rest of the piece, it's actually quite fast, and it's not as simple as you might think to get that under control. And therefore, most people just fluff through it, and I have to admit that I was one of those people. I've played it for years and years and years, but I've never actually bothered to properly learn to get that one little section under control. And if you're one of those people like me, then stay tuned to the end for a bonus tip of how you can go about correcting this kind of mistake that's become ingrained in you over the years. Now, of course, slow practice is definitely helpful, especially when you're first learning the notes of something. However, I don't think it's necessarily always the best way when you need to build something up that needs to be played quite quickly. And of course, if you've read Graham Fitch's piano practice series, then you'll know he sort of shares the same view. So for this section, which does need to be quite fast, I broke it down into a whole set of exercises, some which, yes, I do practice slowly, but most of which I actually intend to practice pretty much at full speed. Here are the exercises I devised. One of the things I want to be able to do is build some rotation into my technique. So for this first section, which is a good candidate for it, I practiced it slowly with strong fingers and emphasizing the rotation of my forearm. I then did the entire bit again slowly and with strong fingers. Then I added rhythms to this slow, strong fingered practice, again practicing just the first part and then the entire part. I also did some right-hand staccato practice, again, slowly. Afterwards, I then started moving on to the faster exercises. 
So I practice, for example, just the first part up until where your thumb reaches a C. And then I practice that same part, but taking it further to where your pinky takes the C above. I practice the right hand fast, the middle part, up to the thumb only. And then again, the right hand fast from the pinky down, using the crossover. The right hand fast to the one that joins the two sections together. Then the right hand fast ending section to the E major chord. I then did some hands together practice just of the beginning and some practice of just the middle. So from the C to the F major chord in the left hand and then extending it to go all the way to the G major chord in the left hand. And then finally all the way back to the C in the left hand. I did of course some hands together practice of the middle section to the E major chord and then the beginning to F, the beginning to G major, and the beginning to E major. Once I decided what exercises I was going to do, I simply allocated five or ten minutes of my daily practice time to working through these exercises from the beginning. So at first only doing the first few, but then as time progressed, progressing slowly through the list. But I started to notice when I was doing these exercises that even though maybe on the previous day I'd got up to a certain point and it seemed to be fine, when I started again the next day, at that same point, there would be errors creeping in and I was effectively finding that I was repeating several times this thing incorrectly. And this, of course, is where the real problem starts because effectively what you're now doing is you're practicing wrong notes rather than right ones. Of course, this means that if we continue practicing these wrong notes, then what we're really doing is undoing all of the good work that we've done previously. And this is where what I'm calling my two steps back approach comes in. Let's just say, for example, that I'm on this particular exercise and I found that I'm starting to make mistakes here. Now, what I'm going to do, rather than just continuing to repeat this exercise, hoping that I'll get it right eventually, is I'm going to take two steps back. I'll go to look at the previous sets of exercises that I did, and I'll restart from this point. I'll spend some time in that practice session drilling the previous exercises, moving slowly forward until I get back to the point at which I was making the mistakes. And generally, what you'll find when you do this is that the mistakes correct themselves when you get back to the original one. Of course, there are occasions when it doesn't fix the problem. And in that case, I'll just go back even further. And maybe on that particular day, I won't try to get all the way back to where I was before. I'll just stay with the previous exercises because clearly I'm doing myself more good practicing correct notes than I'm going to be doing if I'm sitting there incorrectly practicing things. Now for the little bonus tip I talked about before. If this is a piece you've been playing for a long time and always fluffing through that particular part, even though now you've practiced almost to the point that you can't get it wrong, if you were to play the piece through from the beginning, what would happen is, in nine times out of ten cases, by the time you get to this section, you'll start making mistakes again. From the research that I've done, the conclusion I reached was that this is because your old muscle memory can have a tendency to overwrite the newer stuff. And the reason this happens is because, in fact, it's not really muscle memory, is it? Your muscles don't have memory. The memory is in your brain, and your brain remembers a procedure of things that it needs to do to get to a result. And because it's spent so long in this longer procedure, it doesn't automatically introduce the new sequence where you need it to be introduced, if that makes sense. 
The trick that I found to help overcome this is actually to put these exercises into their context at least once each day. And to do that, I'd simply start from a good few bars before, and I'd play through normally to the point that I reached the 30 second notes. And then at that point, I would just switch to whatever the most advanced exercise I'd reached on that particular day was and stop there. It took me a while to work this out, but once I did, I found that it actually does help. And I think what's happening is you're starting to reinsert this new programming, if you like, into that particular part of the sequence that your brain's learned to help it forget the old sequence that was error prone. You should be able to apply this technique to pretty much any of the music that you're learning. I found it generally works well with those sections that I know I'm going to need to build up slowly over time because at the present moment they're a little bit beyond what my technique allows me to do. If you're not already, then don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner, click on that little bell icon, then you'll be notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.